Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, I just had my first day of online classes and I am feeling a little anxious about the coming semester. So happy back to school if you're still in school. I hope you're doing well. And today I am going to be doing the 20 questions book tag. I was tagged by Rana and she has a fantastic booktube channel and if you haven't already you should definitely check her out. She just did a review of The Goldfinch which is one of my favorite books of all time so uh, thank you so much for tagging me and I'm super excited to be doing this tag today. I don't really put too much stock into how long a series is. I think that certain stories take longer to tell than other stories and so it, it just depends on what the author is trying to do. Like you can have series like Discworld where there's like 20 plus books or you can have standalones like uh, The Priory of the Orange Tree and both of them are fantastic and you just, it really just depends on the author and what story the author is trying to tell. Cliffhangers to me are a really easy way out for authors to create tension or suspense in their story, especially if it's some kind of serialized work like webtoons or webcomics. Um, I read Lore Olympus and I feel like every week the episode ends on a cliffhanger and you could just get one tiny crumb of story and every week it's really frustrating to have the episode end on a cliffhanger because over time it just becomes unsatisfying to read. I do think that cliffhangers if used sparingly are perfectly fine but I also think they can be kind of a crutch for an author uh, especially if it's some kind of serialized format. I will take mass market paperback over any hardcover any day. So I think if you had asked me this question like a couple years ago, I would have said either The Raven Cycle or The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater, but like currently in my life there's not one singular book that I really resonated with or that I could call my favorite book, so yeah, I don't really have a favorite book at the moment but I feel like that means that I haven't read it yet so that makes me really excited to read more books and find what my favorite book will be. I'm one of those people who will like stop reading a book if I don't like it so I really don't have a least favorite book because I just don't get I don't waste time on books I don't like but if I had to choose one, it would definitely be The Cursed Child by Harry... I was gonna say by Harry Potter, but by J.K. Rowling. I only read, I think, like a chapter, right? It's a play, so I only read like a couple, you know, pages of it. And I was already so disappointed by the direction it was taking. And it was so upsetting to read that I definitely think that is one of the most dissatisfying experiences I've ever had reading a book uh, was The Cursed Child by J.K. Rowling. Yes, I love love triangles and I think the reason why is because I used to read YA when I was like a teenager and then I stopped reading YA and I started gravitating to more towards adult fantasy. When I stopped reading YA, it was like right before love triangles became a really huge thing. I kind of missed the saturation of the genre with love triangles, which is why I think a lot of people don't like love triangles was because it was so overused in YA for so long. And since I missed that whole sort of phenomenon, I still have a fond place for love triangles in my heart. And Um, so I just started Cushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey and the beginning of this book is so info dumpy and the sad thing is that the stuff that is being info dumped is actually really interesting and I think that if it had been delivered in a better way I would have actually really loved this book but as it is like I'm just not in the right headspace right now to be reading a super dense info dumpy front loaded book and so I didn't finish it but I own it physically so there's a pretty high chance that I will pick it up again and I've heard amazing things about this series so I definitely will be giving it another chance but as of now I'm just not in the mood for a super info dumpy fantasy. I'm in the middle of the second book of the Cradle series by Will White and I'm enjoying it so much. It's so fast-paced, completely the opposite of Cushiel's Dart. 
and the magic system is super interesting. I'm someone who doesn't particularly, you know, like magic systems one way or another. They're kind of like not my, you know, I don't mind them, but they're not my favorite thing. But the magic system in this world is so interesting. And the main character, Lyndon, is definitely one of those underdog characters who you really root for and you want him to succeed. And yeah, I'm just really, I like have no idea where the plot is gonna go. And that's always really exciting when you're reading a book is when you have no idea where the plot's gonna go and but you're just kind of in for the ride. Um, I think probably Medea, either that or Oedipus Rex. I had to read those in high school so they're like super old Greek plays. And I'd say Robert Jordan, Robin Hobb, Donna Tartt, those are like authors who if they were you know releasing a new book I would immediately go out and buy it and so yeah probably those three are like my favorite. Um, I do have a library card but I'm currently living with my parents so I'm not near the library so right now buying books is how I am consuming literature. Probably the Dresden Files. I did not like Harry Dresden as a main character, but I do love the sort of tone and atmosphere that Jim Butcher creates in those books. I read the first two books and um, a lot of people say that the series gets better as time goes on, so I definitely will be giving it another shot sometime in the future, but for now I think they're a little um, overrated. Another one is It by Stephen King. I just think that book is way too long. It does not need to be a thousand pages long and it needed an editor so badly to like chop it down into at least half the size. And um, I do, I know it's kind of like a cultural icon and I think that has more to do with the movies than the book. So yeah, I think the book itself is a little overrated as well. This is a subject I have a lot of interest in. I think that the way that people keep their place in their books is like very indicative of their personality. So I used to be a dog ear person like back in high school and elementary school. And then I kind of shifted to this thing where I would just memorize the page number that I was on because I am not a person who reads multiple books at one time. I like to just read one book and really, you know, immerse myself in that book. So just memorizing the page number wasn't super hard. And then now I have a bookmark that my best friend gave to me. So I used to always lose them, but for some reason I have kept this bookmark for a long time and knock on wood, I will keep it for a long time because my best friend gave it to me. And so every time I look at it and use it, it reminds me of her. So um, I think it's kind of like a good luck bookmark. But also I read a lot of eBooks now and I'm trying to shift to eBooks as like my primary book consuming medium. Uh, just because I think it's more sustainable and obviously with ebooks you don't even have to worry about keeping your place uh, So it's pretty convenient in that regard Ella Enchanted is such a great book to reread and I just love this book so much. It's such a great retelling I am such a comforting read so, so Ella Enchanted is definitely one The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan is one of my favorite books to reread and I think it's my favorite in the whole series, which I think may be a controversial opinion, I don't know. But Eye of the World is just a masterpiece in my opinion. And um, I also love The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater and I can always just pick up any of those books and feel instantly comforted because I read those so much in high school and they meant so much to me in high school. So a lot of books that I read as a kid um, I can reread and just it makes me feel really nostalgic and comforted. Yes, I can listen to music while reading. I often listen to music and um, even music with words, honestly. I find that once I get into the book, I don't even listen. I'm not even like listening to the music. It, it's just like background noise, so it doesn't really matter. And another thing I've been really enjoying recently is listening to ASMR while reading. It is literally the most relaxing experience to read a book and listen to ASMR at the same time. 
I highly recommend that you try it. I really don't feel any specific affinity towards one POV or multiple POVs, but I do want to say that I miss Percy Jackson because of the singular point of view where we got to be in Percy's head. And I think that Rick Riordan's like the I think that the spin-off like sequels suffered from the fact that it was in third person just because like the original Percy Jackson books were so good because the Percy's inner monologue was just so good and so like I feel like I had a harder time connecting to the characters in the sequels just because they were in third person but also I was like kind of grown up at that point I was like a teenager like an older teenager when I when those started coming out so that probably also contributed to my like disconnect with the characters but Definitely nowadays I read books over time. Um, I have been trying to like enjoy reading more. When I was a kid I used to like just speed through books and like finish them so fast but nowadays I really read for pleasure more than anything and so just sitting down with a book and really reading each sentence and really absorbing each sentence, really engaging with a text is a lot more fun to me than just superficially reading through the book. Okay, I'm gonna tag three people. I'm gonna tag Larisse from Reads and Films, uh, Parisianable Reads, I'm so sorry if I'm saying this cor incorrectly, and Yasmin B. Reading, all amazing booktubers, and I think you should go check them out. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. This was a lot of fun to film. And my next video is gonna be a reading vlog. I'm gonna try vlogging, reading. I don't know how it's gonna go, but um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Thank you.